Go. Oh, first cast. That's what I'm talking about. Got him. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, no, no. Woo. <laughs> That might be five. That's gotta be four pounds. <laughs> oh, damn. Damn. Oh, man, it's a double. <laughs> oh, they're huge, too. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Yes. Oh, my God. So, this is the smaller one. Look at this guy. There we go. Fish on. Not expecting that. Not good, not good. Had a little technical difficulties. Wow, that is a solid fish. That thing is like way bigger than I was thinking. Holy crap. Oh my god, we got a fish. We got a fish. Just as about to call it. Going up current. It's a lot bigger than I thought he would be when I first hooked him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Try and heal him up. Ooh. Oh, the Mud King is strong with this one. All right, cool. Twenty six to say. Solid. Oh, mm. That's what we're talking about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good morning, bright and early in the morning, and welcome back to fishing. So uh, yeah, today is the day we're gonna shoot something a little different. This is our 2020 recap video. So in this video, we're just gonna kind of go over some of the, the best fishing moments of 2020. Um, 2020 obviously was a very challenging year for many of us, including myself, uh, but it also had its highlights. I mean, I can't make this video without mentioning that I got married this year, so I was very happy about that. Uh, and very happy to keep my job and keep working and of course, keep fishing. So this video is going to include my top 2020 fishing moments. So just a couple things. Uh, this will be a top 10 list, but it's not going to be a traditional one. I'm not ranking these videos in terms of quality. Like it's not 10 being the worst and one being the best, just because it's hard to really compare some of these sessions. You know, I fish for whatever I can during the season. So I decided the way I'm going to lay out this video is chronologically. So we're going to start with the earlier stuff in the year and end with the most recent, all of which were memorable moments. It's not necessarily the 10 best catches, just 10 best experiences. Uh, some of them might be limited down to one catch, but they're more broad uh, measures of what was fun this year. So without further ado, let's get this thing started. Uh, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so we're going to start this video off with my first real significant catch of this year, which was February. Uh, my wife and I went on vacation to Cancun, or a nice resort in that area. It was probably the last normal thing we did this year before things went bottom up. 
Uh, wasn't sure what was going to happen. Uh, I fished there before, and then this happened. Check it out. Oh my god. Yes, we're hooked up. We're hooked up. Yes. We're on. Big fish. I think it's a jack. Oh, yes. Woo! He's still on. Oh boy, this could be a problem. Oh boy, we don't want to be schooled. Jesus. You seeing this? Oh, don't run over my line. Not now, boat, not now. It's gonna be very hard to turn this fish around. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez, this thing's a monster. Light tackle, big action. Alright folks, this GoPro ran out of battery while I was fighting the fish. I've been battling this thing for like 20, 20 minutes at least. It's a monster, or for what I'm fishing. I can't tell if it's a pompano or a jack. I think it's a jack. It's big. We're gonna try and beach it. Yeah, you wanted that. Oh my god. Let's go. Try not to get my shoes all gross. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Wow, look at that shit. Here we go. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my god. Wow, look at that. We pulled it off. It's like a 20 pound jack right there. Light tackle action. Look at that. <laughs> it's talking. Here he goes. Unreal. Okay, so moving on to number nine, uh, we are switching gears completely. This is a clip from March 2020, uh, mid-March. My wife and I ended up quarantining most of the spring in upstate New York. And one of my favorite things that I learned to do much better this year was to vertical jig lake trout. Uh, this clip right here is from March, though I was vertical jigging lake trout uh, essentially March all the way until June. Uh, and even during the fall too, but this was probably the first real significant moment of vertical jigging. Uh, I was fishing a, a body of water, doing what I typically do. Uh, it was very, very cold, like ice was forming around my dry suit. It was very uncomfortable. And just when I was about to lose hope, I connected with this fish. And I have to say, uh, I was probably not properly equipped for this fish, but I managed it anyway. So. Uh, let's check this out. Got him. Yes. Oh, that's a good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Oh, well. Wow. This, this is a serious fish right here, folks. Wow. <sighs> This may 
be the one under this rod. Woo! This is gonna be serious. Marked him in 85 feet of water. Oh, oh my God. Scared the crap out of me. Gotta get a look at this fish. Oh, there's some color. It's big. What do we have here, folks? Oh, nice fish. Wow. Wow. Oh boy. He did not like the look of that boat. Serious lake trout, folks. Serious lake trout. Jesus. Get in there. Get. Oh my God. Don't lose this fish, Dad. Don't lose this fish. That might be a PB right there. Oh, yes. Look at that tank. That's why you fish in the cold. Never gets old. Oh. <laughs> PB. At least for a non Niagara Laker. Okay, this next clip, uh, we are switching. We're still in fresh water, but much warmer now. Uh, this clip is from, I think, early to mid May. Uh, this one is just a one fish catch. Uh, I do freshwater fish a fair amount in the spring most years. But this year, because I was quarantined upstate and had easy access to fishing, I spent a lot more time uh, working shorelines, fishing after work when I could, sometimes from the kayak, sometimes from shore. So in this particular video, uh, I was fishing from shore and ha was having an okay day. Uh, but I ended up encountering a very nice largemouth. Uh, and it had been years, years since I've cracked anything over five pounds. So... Without further ado, uh, let's check this one out. Uh, it was much of a surprise. I was actually expecting it to be a walleye for a short period of time. Uh, here it is. There we go. That's what we're talking. Oh, that might be what we want. That might be it. What is that? Is that what I think it is? Oh yes, it is. It is. Yeah, oh man, no, it's not. That is a monster largemouth. Oh my god. I thought that was a walleye. Oh my god, look at that thing. Look at that thing. Stay in, stay in, stay in. Thought that was a walleye. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at that. That's a PB for the season at the very least. Oh man. Hard to top this today. Chunkosaurus. Chunkosaurus Rex. Let's see what we're working with. I knew it. Oh yeah. Keep going. Five. Almost five and three quarters. Hell yeah. That's what we're talking about. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so moving on to our next submission, which is number seven. Uh, we are looking at freshwater again, roughly the same time of year. Uh, we're looking specifically at one of my favorite freshwater species of fish to catch, which is smallmouth bass. Uh, Finger Lakes smallmouths pre-spawn are just incredible. Uh, so this is more general. Uh, I have a ton of smallmouth footage, but what I decided to do for this one is show one of my favorite sessions. So in this particular moment, 
uh, I caught a ton of smallmouth. Uh, and of those smallmouth, the best five was easily a 15 pound plus bag, which for some of you might not be a big deal, but for me, uh, I'd be lucky if I just catch one three pounder a session. So to get five of them in one go was incredible. And to make things even more interesting, uh, the weather was kind of iffy and we ended up getting a blizzard during this session. Uh, and that was an interesting thing to go through too. Fortunately, I had all the technology and equipment to tackle this weather, but uh, well, let's just say it was an interesting session. So here's some of the highlights of that. Uh, but honestly, any of my smallmouth footage from this season was great. Uh, there was some good sight fishing. There was a lot of other good sessions where I got on some big fish, but this one was probably just a little bit above them. So here we go. Right up to the boat. That's a fish. Oh man, that's a nice one. It's not expecting that. Not expecting that at all. It's a good fish. Followed it all the way to the boat. Wow, nice small mouth. Nice small mouth. Look at the colors on that thing. Wow. <laughs> Look how dark that thing is. That's going to be very, very close to four pounds. <laughs> Get a measure on this one. Three, three. Come on, three for three. Three for three. What are we doing? Let's go. That's a better fish, too. Oh, yeah. That's a monster. That's a monster. Get in that net. Whoa, this is gonna be so close. Keep saying that it's gonna be four, but. That is a solid fish. <laughs> Definitely get some measurements on this guy. I don't think he's gonna make it, but he's close. Well, it's the best of the day so far. Call him. It's hovering around three and a half. Solid. Almost missed that one. Yeah. Go three at least. Probably a good 18 incher. And we're about to get on shore, so we're gonna let him go. See ya. Right up to the boat. Right up to the boat. Cast is never over until it's over. That fish got some shoulders. <laughs> Probably. Up until this point, it's been pretty light snow, but it seems like this cell right here is no joke. So we're just following it back, following the shoreline back to the the ramp, and then we're just going to cross. Uh, yeah, that sucks. Okay, moving on to number six. Uh, this is a section that I am generalizing in as well. Uh, one thing I really wanted to learn to do in 2020 was successfully troll to catch some nice brown trout and landlocked Atlantic salmon. And it definitely took a bit of trial and error, a bit of research on YouTube after watching videos from Elias V, uh, C Money, and others that have done this before as well as uh, working with some people and getting knowledge from some of the local anglers in this area. But after a bit of trial and error, I finally got into a bit of a rhythm. 
and it definitely paid off. My only regret was I didn't kind of adjust my tactics earlier in the season as right as I got into it, uh, it was basically the end and I had to pack up. Uh, but yeah, in this particular clip, I'm trying a new body of water for the very first time. And after trying all these new tactics, I was immediately successful. So let's check this out. Oh, we on. Can't believe that worked. Got something nice. It's trying to come up. It's gotta be a brown. Oh, nice brown, nice brown. Fat brown. Oh yeah, I'll take him. Oh my god. Oh, he's making a mess already. That is a solid fish. We got a nice tank of a brown. Easy six or seven pounder. Look at that. Woof. Solid, solid fish. What a chubster. <laughs> that is such a chunky fish. Come on, I'm, I'm trying to get you home. Get this wet first. Well, what a football. <laughs> oh, he's only 22 inches, but such a fat fish. Such a fatty. Look at that. <laughs> fish never seem to cease to amaze me. See you later, buddy. Okay, moving on to number five, we are finally on saltwater. So we're in July 2020. So I'm not going to lie, uh, saltwater was really tough this year, uh, especially after 2019, which was an awesome year of saltwater fishing. Uh, Especially after coming back from upstate where I finally felt like I got a, in a good rhythm with the fishing, it was really tough to come back out to the east end of Long Island and really struggle to put time in the water and not really get that much out. So this session was actually the exception. And the first time I really got onto some good fish, got some good sea bass, as you can see, got into some short fluke, uh, some shad for some reason. Uh, but the real highlight was when I finally hooked into a solid fluke. Uh, I called this video the doormat debut because it was the first really solid fluke we got of the year, aka a doormat. So let's check that out. Uh, and not too long after getting that doormat, I got another good fish. So let's take a look at this. There we go. That's a nice fish. That's what I'm talking about. The net ready for this one. Might be a fluke. Might be a fluke. Feeling real heavy. If it's not two fish, we got something serious unless it's foul hooked. Oh, this is gonna be good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on. The mats are back. Holy sh! So we got our first, at least close to doormat of the year. Oh man, that's a nice fish. That's what I'm talking about. Booyah! There it is, folks. Solid 27 inch fluke. I'd say in the neighborhood of seven to eight pounds. Not a, a super doormat like the one I got last year, but effing awesome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, so here we are, number four on the countdown. Uh, this one is also predominantly a fluke submission. Those are some sea bass in there as well. Uh, when making this list, I tried to do my best to not 
dominate it with one species of fish. Uh, and I only say that because it's been two fluke back to back. Now, trust me, I can make a whole countdown of fluke from the season. As tough as a season as it was, I had some good moments. And if that's something you're interested in, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, so I had to make this its own separate entry. This was without question the day of fluke fishing that I was waiting for all season. Uh, and it was crazy. It was a full day. It was basically the end of my summer. After this was basically autumn, I had to start the school year off again. Uh, and it was crazy. It was like Jurassic Park. You know, the first four hours looking all over for fish and couldn't find anything. And then the second, I don't know, four, because I was out there all day, the bite just turned on all of a sudden. Got four good keeper sea bass, or three, I forget which, and two good fluke right off the bat. And then all of a sudden, things really change. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah. Big sea bass. Or fluke. That might be a fluke. Doubling down. Big head shakes. Now we're feeling the wrath. Little by little. It's got to be a fluke. It's a big fluke. This is definitely the biggest fish of the day. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is what we want to see. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, we... That might not be as big as the others. Or if it is, I don't know. Yes, sir. This is the best day of the year so far, saltwater style. Good six pounder, seven pounder, probably. All right, ending this season off right. This is only part one. Tomorrow's part two. Easy six pounder. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big fish. Whoa. We get this when we're done. We will end with this fish. We will end with this fish. We can get him. Jeez. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't drop the net. <clears throat> oh man. That might be 10. That might be 10. Oh my God. Oh my God. The first thing we got to do is get this one off. Let's just do this for a sec. Look at that. Look at the 25 incher on top of that. The 26 incher even. Fortunately, the GoPro battery just died. But we got him. Jeez Louise. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh my god, jeez. It's just about 29. Eh, it's gonna be close. Here it is. Oh, really close to 10 pounds. easy to hold these big ones. <laughs> Look at that sea monster right there. Good God. If this is the last fluke I catch this year, I'm, I'm fine with it, but I hope, I sure as hell hope it's not. Yeah, so that fluke was my biggest of the season up until that point, and it remained the biggest. And as I said, I would have been content if that was the last fluke I caught that year, but it wasn't. In fact, in less than 24 hours, uh, I went fishing the next morning, and while it wasn't as good of a day, this happened. Whoa, 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 jeez. Big fish, jeez. This, this is something big. This is how you start morning. I think it's a giant sea bass, or a giant fluke. Starting to feel like a fluke. 
Not doing not doing much. Might be something foul hook too. So this fight that first run was nuts. If it's foul hook that's gonna all bets are off. The fluke. It's kinda hooked sideways. I knew something was up. Big. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. Another monster. Knew something was up. That's at least a seven or eight pounder right there. I'm guessing like 27, 28 inches. That one is 27 and a half. I gotta, nah, yeah, 27 and a half. If you pinch the tail, just that little over 27. There it is, folks. Killing it these last two days. This is a season finale for the books. Summer season finale, that is. And this is just the beginning. You don't need a big boat to catch big fish. There's proof right there. So, working down the list, we are on number three right now. Uh, I'm calling this Autumn Albi Action, the 2020 edition. So, yeah, this happened on the second or the very last day, actually, that I was going fluke fishing this year. Uh, I went the day before and got some decent fluke and some sea bass, nothing special. Uh, and I decided to go one more day, and I must stress, actually, uh, this day would not have been possible without the help from my friend James, a.k.a. Yakin with Bigfoot. If you haven't checked out his channel and you like the saltwater stuff, definitely check him out. He's got some great content. But yeah, he lent me his Mirage Drive because I was having some technical difficulties. Uh, and I went fishing with my friend Rich in the beginning. And yeah, at first we were started out uh, fairly shallow. We got on some small fluke sea bass and some mackerel, as you can see here. Uh, but as the day went on, uh, the fluke bite was just really a grind. Uh, able to find a few short fluke and some sea bass. Uh, some were even keeper size, the sea bass that was, but nothing big for fluke. But after a little while, uh, for the first time this season, the, the albies just showed up out of nowhere. And if you were fishing for albies out in Montauk this season, you know it got very good. Uh, but prior to this, I hadn't seen them at all this year. So it was a major shock when they showed up. And man, did I need to work to get these things. But when they did, uh, it was well worth it. So let's take a look at this clip. Uh, I ended up getting into two very nice false albacore. Oh my God, look at the size of these albies. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my God, they're huge. Let's go. Got him. Oh boy. We going for a ride. Oh my God, this is gonna be a very long battle. Some of those were some very large albies. Oh my goodness. No autumn in Montauk is complete without some albie action. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Solid fish. Oh, that just made the day.
Okay, we are now to number two, the second to last submission here. Uh, this one's more of a generalization as well. One thing I finally did this year that I did not do successfully in the past was finally get on a hot blackfish or toe tog bite. Um, I went only twice this season, really, but those two were all it took. Uh, it was the very end of October and the very beginning of November, October 31st and November 1st. Um, I am not even exaggerating when, it, when I say between these two days, I caught and landed more blackfish than I've ever gotten in the remainder of my life combined. Not to say I'm, that's saying a lot. I've never been very successful at blackfish fishing. Um, additionally, we ran some stripers too, as you can see here in the clip. Nothing big, but a, a fun little uh, blitz of schoolies. Uh, and it was just an action-packed day. A very nice way to cap off saltwater for the season. Got a lot of fish, a lot of good footage. I had to cut a lot of footage of this to even make it uh, remotely workable. Most of the fish were short, but it was just a blast. So, uh, yeah, one of my favorite sessions for sure, or not even sessions, just moments, was getting into all these blackfish. Uh, again, even if they're not that big, they put up a heck of a fight. So let's look at some of the better size ones I got from this trip. Stay out of that lobster pot. Oh yeah, stay out of that lobster pot. Jeez. Stay out of that lobster pot. <laughs> that might keep. That very well, I think it's gonna keep. Nice fish. Oh yeah. Totage. Measure this one, but we'll do it. Just to keep me honest, this fish is going about 17 and a half almost. Pinch the tail, just about. Solid fish. <laughs> Be it. This is a good fish. It took a while. This was just three drops, three fish immediately. Oh yeah. Best one in a very long while. That could be number two. It's gonna be close. That's a good one. In you go. <laughs> I think that'll do. That's gonna be very close. All right, it's got our second gorgeous keeper blackfish. About 16 and a half. Very healthy fish. He's coming home, or she's coming home to dinner. Uh, be our guest of honor. Okay, and finally the last submission on the countdown, number one. Uh, fishing the Niagara River for lake trout and steelhead in December. What a great way to cap off the year. Um, I fished the Niagara last year at about the same time of year and got into some very nice lake trout. So to be able to go back there this year was a real treat, and I was not disappointed. I got in some very nice fish immediately. Uh, and I won't say much more than that. Just take a look at the footage. Here were two of the, the best catches I got. Uh, Check it out. Leon, got something big. Big fish. Get this net ready. Get him out of that current, out of those rocks. Def definite Laker. Can I get him out though? That's the question. Wish I had braid. Not gonna horse him. We got an eight pound test. No leader because why bother with it? There he is. Oh boy. Not horsing this guy at all. He's just sitting in that current. I don't know how we're gonna get this fish at this current. Oh my God, look at that fish. Easy 10, easy 10. Get out, get out of that current, get into this soft water. All right, we got him, we got him. We got him, he's coming. 
That thing might be, that's a 10 for sure. Oh my God, no, 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 not there, not there. Not like this, not like this. Might not be as big as I thought he was, but he's, he's nice. Come on, got him good. Come on, come on. Oh yeah. I'd, I'd say 10, I'd say 10. <laughs> Wow, almost blew the shot. Look at that tank, Jesus. Look at that. That is what we're talking about, folks. 10 pound Laker. Yeah, he's 30, at least 31. 31 inch Laker shaker. Way he goes. Awesome. Oh, we're on, we're on. Oh yeah, yes. That's what we're talking about. Yes. All right, my other camera just died. We just hooked the steelhead, finally, after many long hours of nothing. I know this is coming out totally shot, but we're going to have to deal with it. Hopefully we're getting some good footage. All right, folks, we did it. Check it out. Sick steelhead. All right, <laughs> let's go get the camera fixed. I can't believe that the camera died right at that moment, but we got him. Wow, what a fish. That's epic. It's a big, I mean, I know they get a lot bigger than this, but that is awesome. He inhaled it, jeez. All right. Quick measure. And we get him home. Oh, never mind. Okay, so that's going to do it for our 2020 recap. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed making this video. It was kind of a trip down memory lane. <laughs> uh, it wasn't an easy video to make, too, because I had to cut a lot of footage from these videos. And with that, I would strongly recommend seeing the source material for a lot of these videos, all of which is on the channel. Um, and even though I say these are the top moments, uh, there are other moments that could have easily made it to this list, but I, I tried to, you know, keep it at just 10. And I also tried to not uh, only have one type of fishing represented on this list. Hence the reason I did the chronological, you know, beginning to the end of the year. So I hope you appreciated that and enjoyed. Uh, and I promise you this next year, I'm going to try and keep with it as much as I can. My goal is one video a week at the very least, and I'm already off to a good start. Got some footage stockpiled for the first two or three weeks of January. So that's going to do it. Uh, if there's anything you want to see me do and tackle in this new year, happy new year, uh, please leave that in the comments. Otherwise I'll leave it at that. Uh, make sure to like the video if you haven't done so already. Really want to stack up those likes for this. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And if you have subscribed, thanks for your constant support on the channel. It means so much to me. This is it. Signing out, as always. Goodbye from fishing.